we're going to have fun with freeze dryers. Our first little experiment involves balloons. These are just good old uh, nine inch latex balloons, nothing special about them. And what we're going to do, we're just going to take some of these and tie a knot in them like so. So we're going to call this the little baby balloon. Well, we also have little baby balloons and we have mama balloons and we have, if they'll stay in place, papa balloons. So we have three different sizes of balloons and we're going to put these in the freeze dryer and see what happens. We're at the freeze dryer. First of all, we're going to put our papa balloons in the back. And then the mama balloons go in the middle. And all the baby balloons go up front. Then we're going to go up to the leaf onto the function test and just press vacuum. So what is causing these balloons to inflate when they're inside a vacuum? We're going to find this out and use science to answer the question. So I have a 9 volt battery and I taped a couple of wires to it and I have a piezo alarm and this is good between 3 and 24 volts DC. So when I connect these two wires together, this thing just makes a really terrible noise. And it's loud. So we're going to put this into the freeze dryer and turn it on, turn on the vacuum, and we're going to see what happens to the noise when the noise is within a vacuum. We're at the freeze dryer, so we're going to go ahead and connect this up, and like I said, it's going to make a lot of noise. What we're going to do, we're going to put this piezo alarm in the freeze dryer. We're going to take the freeze dryer down as low as we possibly can and see what kind of noise it's making. Right now, we're at 507 millitors. We're basically a half a millimeter away from a perfect vacuum. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the vacuum pump, and we're going to see what kind of noise we can hear from inside the freeze dryer. Okay, I can just barely detect, just barely hear any noise. And I'm not sure what kind of noise this camera is going to pick up, but I hope you can hear it too. So now what we're going to do, we're going to release the vacuum slowly, at least I hope slowly.
Now I can hear it getting louder and louder. Getting louder. The vacuum is almost vented. So it may be hard to see or hear the before and after. See now it's getting really loud now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these clips and put them side by side. I have a glass bowl here and with a couple of paper clips I attached a thermometer that goes up to 220 degrees. Well we all know that water boils at 212 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and add water to this bowl. And this water is measuring oh about 75, 78 degrees. So the question is when does water really boil? We're going to find out. We're going to go ahead and stick this in the freeze dryer and see at what temperature we can get water to boil. So here's our bowl of water in the freeze dryer. I don't know if you can see it, but it says 78 degrees. So here's an example using the baby balloon. Outside the baby balloon, there's 14.7 psi around the balloon. This is caused by the atmospheric pressure. When I tied the knot in the balloon, I trapped inside the balloon also 14.7 psi. The balloon was placed inside the freeze dry chamber and then the air was removed causing a vacuum. As the pressure inside decreased, the pressure inside the balloon was able to expand until it could expand no more and the balloon became the size it did. So if you think of the mama and the papa balloon that had even greater amount of air pressure because I filled the balloon partially, those were able to expand even more. To understand what happens in the freeze dryer with sound, first we have to understand how sound is made. Now I have this big speaker right here. On the back end of the speaker is an electromagnet. So when a signal comes in through these wires and goes into an electromagnet, depending on what the signal does, that electromagnet will start going back and forth. And as it goes back and forth, it moves the entire speaker cone. Now right now I'm probably moving this cone one or two times a second. 
if I could move this cone several hundred or thousand times a second, I would produce noise. I have this app on my phone that can generate sound from 1 hertz all the way up to 22,000 hertz. Now, most humans can only hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So 22,000 hertz is probably out of the range that a human can hear, although dogs could probably hear. If I go all the way down to 1 hertz and play this, you're probably not going to hear it. Now, at my age, I have a hard time even hearing the sound at, say, 28 hertz, let alone down at a lower rate at 20 hertz. The older you get, well, your ear starts to uh, play tricks on you, so to speak. So if I were to raise this up at 215 hertz, well, I can start hearing that. If we go even higher and higher, well, I can still hear 12,000 12, hertz, but it's kind of difficult because my ear and my hearing has been affected by my the years in the Air Force. Anyway, I digress. If I were to get my hand, if I could start waving my hand fast enough, say if I were to wave, wave my hand 500 times a second as fast as I could, I would generate noise. So at 500 times a second, I would generate that noise. So if I could do this 500 times a second, I'd generate the same noise you're hearing now. Now in a freeze dryer, the reason my hand would be making noise is because I'm moving the air back and forth. In a freeze dryer, under vacuum, there is less or zero air, and if there's zero air, there's no air to push back and forth. So when we first put the piezo alarm in the freeze dryer, it made noise, but as we removed the air, and as the chamber became a vacuum, although we were not able to get to a perfect vacuum, there was less air in the freeze dryer for the piezo alarm to make noise. So what's the definition of boiling? Boiling is basically the transition from a liquid state to a gas state. In this example we have water that is being boiled, going from a liquid state and turning into water vapor. At sea level, water boils at 212 degrees. At 4800 feet, where I live, water boils at 203 degrees. The air pressure around the water prevents the molecules from getting excited depending on the temperature. As that pressure around the water is removed, it's easier for water molecules to get excited and to turn from a liquid into a vapor. So when you remove most of the atmosphere in a freeze dryer, the molecules can move or get excited at 78 degrees and turn from a liquid into a vapor.